10 things to purchase for $100 at Walmart or any local store that you want to purchase from. These items are game changers. Not only game changers because they can benefit you, but if you buy redundancy, like we always tell you, stockpile extra, this excess, this extra, will be what you will utilize one day if we see a cashless society like we talked about. If you don't have the monies to buy gold and have tons of cash, buy these items because these items are things that you can hoard, you can stockpile, you can utilize, but also you can use for money or currency because they're necessities and needs for a lot of people. Under $100 from Walmart or your local store. Let's start right now. We'll never be the same after that day. You wrap me around your fingers and you stay. Hey guys, welcome to The Max. Thank you so much for being here today. It is actually a freezing cold morning, so we're gonna make this video pretty short and sweet, but I wanted to hit these 10 bartered items. We talked about uh, a few days ago, a cashless society and having gold and cash and having uh, real estate and things that we need. Well, let's talk about a quick list of bartering economic items that you can purchase at your local grocery store. It doesn't take you It doesn't take you having to order them. It doesn't take you having to drive somewhere. Just go to your local big box store, your local grocery store, uh, your local super center. I would challenge you to go to Walmart, especially for people like me that live in these small little towns. You can't find a lot of these things around. Number one and two deals with vices. Now, this may not be vices for you, but it could be vices for other people. Not only that, they could be utilized in several different ways. Number one would be a tobacco product. Now, I don't, I don't dip. I don't smoke. Uh, I, I just don't. It's not a big habit of mine. It never was. However, it is a vice that can be utilized when it comes to bartering because a lot of people that are addicted to nicotine, a lot of people that would pay top dollar for these uh, these cartons of cigarettes or cigars or pipe tobacco or, or skull, whatever it is, I know that sounds crazy, but you'd be surprised if they're willing to pay six to seven or eight dollars for this pack that they're going to utilize in a half a day. They're going to pay a lot more for it when they're in need of it and you may have it and you may need something else. The point of bartering is not just to say, well, I just want to help you. The point of bartering is what can you do for me as I do for you? In a crap hits the fan situation, uh, tobacco products would be a good purchase for you to utilize in a bartering capability because people will pay top dollar for it. No matter if you think that's a good thing or not to utilize, pay off really good for you because you'll be able to get a lot of good things for it. As I said, number two goes along with that liquor. Now, hard liquor would be one of those things that again, I. I don't condone on drinking any of it, but we utilize hard liquor such as vodkas for tinctures, for uh, antiseptic, for disinfectant. Uh, it also can start fires. There's so many benefits to it. It's a staple for your pantry that is a lifetime non-perishable item. It lasts forever. I mean, so it's a good purchase. I purchase, again, vodka because I can utilize it because it's got high proof, high volume, and it tends to be a little bit less costly than something like a whiskey or uh, a whiskey or rum or anything like that again i'm not using this to drink i'm using this for medicinal purposes now i know you've probably heard that a lot but that's the truth for me however it is a vice and a lot of people will pay top dollar for it or give you something in trade or barter for it not that you're wanting to benefit their habits but again in a crap hits fan situation uh, liquor would be a good thing to have not only for disinfectant starting a fire antiseptic or to simply uh, make tinctures for medicines it's good to have because it's a vice for a lot of people and you will be able to get a lot for it. Number three, this is something I purchase literally on a monthly basis, is salt. I buy bulk salt. Salt is good because we preserve meat in it. We cure meat out, such as our bacons. We utilize it in every form of preservations, even down to canning and dehydrating, every bit of that I use salt in. Salt also has a lot of other benefits. This is a short video, so I would challenge you to look at some of the other benefits of salt. But when it comes to worth your weight in salt, that was a currency at one time across the world. People knew that it had preserving powers and it would help in so many different facets of life. So bartering wise, currency wise, salt would be a great one. It's very economical to purchase. If you're doing curing for meat, I like coarse salt. Coarse salt cures better because it doesn't adhere into the meat too much to make it too salty, but it does help the outside when we're making it brine or cure. It allows it to do what it needs to do in preserving, but not go too much into the meat where it's overly salty. Salt would definitely be number three. Number four, I raise bees. So it's pretty easy for me, but uh, if you're not, I would purchase from a provider of 
bulk honey. Honey is a sweetener, but again, it's kind of like liquor. It lasts forever. It's non-perishable. It also cures food. We utilize it for curing. We also use it in medicinal benefits and making tinctures and making little elixirs and syrups for us to take medicinally wise. It's also good for your metabolism. It's good for your energy boost. It's good to put on any and every kind of food that you can imagine. And it's got so many benefits to your health by taking in honey, especially if it's local honey and unfiltered. It's just raw. So pick up some honey. This is a great bartering item for your pantry. Uh, we have it in five gallon totes. So we raise about 15 to 20 gallons a year of honey. If you're not doing that, I promise you, if you go to a local apiary that has an excess of honey, they will sell bulk honey to you and you can get it for a way better price and it's local and it's usually unfiltered, which is going to have a lot more extra benefits to it. Check into honey for another bartered item. Number five, I made big purchases this week of these things. Uh, tea, coffee, and caffeine drinks. Now these are healthier, uh, natural teas, natural coffees, and also uh, I buy Celsius packets, which are energy boost packets that are natural caffeine as well. They're, you can utilize them a little bit different, especially when I'm thinking about running or working out. It's a great additive there. But I purchased these because these are good caffeine additives. If someone is used to taking in caffeine on a daily basis and all of a sudden it's not there, they don't have the funds to buy that, but they have other goods, they would do a lot to have that coffee, that tea, or that caffeinated drink. I don't challenge you to buy Cokes and soft drinks and all that. That's that's not what I would challenge you to buy. But I'd buy powdered versions of uh, I'd buy powdered versions of energy drinks because they last a long time on pantry shelves, as long as they're natural. And then look at coffee and tea and putting it up for a long time stockpile. But not only that, not only for you. This is a good bartered item. Again, this is one of those things kind of like salt. It was utilized around the world for years and years and years as a currency. This would be good to have for bartering. Six is medicine. We don't practice taking a lot of medicine here, but antibiotics, buying them from places like Jace Medical or buying over-the-counter pain meds or buying over-the-counter uh, cough and, and flu medicines, those are good because a lot of people do not want to be sick and a lot of people can't tolerate pain. A lot of people need those things or they crutch on those things kind of like tobacco kind of like liquor it's a vice and i hate to say it if we're in a bartered capability or a situation where currency is no more you're in a bad scenario and so therefore even though you want to help your neighbor you want to help your person down the road really it comes down to helping you and your family so if you have those things that they want even if it's like over-the-counter meds or pain meds or, or or something they need because they're sick you're going to give it, but you want to be able to get something back in return. Bartering is great and medicines would be a game changer when it comes to a bartered pantry. Uh, we believe in having uh, emergency preparedness um, antibiotics, but we also believe in having just over-the-counter meds. These are very good to have and pick up and have in your pantry. As the sun comes up, I hope it's not too bright, but number seven, be heirloom seeds. We talk about this in several videos, but I don't want to ever not mention heirloom seeds. If you have the power to grow your own food, you are doing something that no one can stop. You are sustainable. So buy a seed vault or buy heirloom seeds for every season. Don't just buy crops for one season, buy it for 12 seasons. So I always challenge people if they're looking for heirloom seeds, buy what they call a seed vault, buy a crop, a year's worth of food. That way you can have a wide array of selections when it comes to each season and whatever season that you're needing to go through if a crab hits the fan situation. Uh, if you have the seeds, you have life, you have food. Because not only that, not only can you grow food, you can then harvest the seeds back. I like survival seeds because they're non-GMO, they're non, they're, non -GMO, they're heirloom, and they also tell you how to harvest the seed back to have seeds forever. That's just my favorite. So check on buying some seeds. This is a great bartering asset because it allows people to say, not only do you have food, you have the power to grow food year over year over year. Number eight, go to Walmart, go to your, your local outdoor store, pick up some fish and lures. Fish and lures are excellent. Having extra line and fish and lures, uh, both are very economical, but they can 
give you food to eat. Not that you can go fish wherever you want to, but if you come into a situation where you find a creek, you find a place where you need to get some food, if there's fish there, you have a way to catch them, you lure them, and you have food for days. Fish is one of the main sources that, that doesn't take you feeding it to live. My pond and lake, I don't do any kind of feeding there. I don't do any kind of cleaning. I don't do any kind of maintenance other than just cutting grass around it and bush hogging and putting the sheep around it. But it provides food because it has good fish in it. Buy some fishing lures, buy some fishing line. Not only good for you, buy the extra to barter with because you're giving them kind of like the seeds. You're giving them a source to feed their families and you're gonna get a lot in return for that. Number nine is fresh fruit and fresh vegetables. Now that's not pantry stables that's gonna last for a long time unless you can on preserve them, which you need to learn how to do. But if you have them and you have a garden growing or you have an orchard growing, keep it safe, make sure you keep it, uh, you know, Keep it where it's only yours and you have only access to it, but it will allow you to trade and barter some of that fresh food for other things. A lot of people would be living off canned food, junk food, uh, heavy carb foods that are not good for you, maybe empty calories. By having uh, herbs, vegetables, fresh fruit, you are now making a food that is worth a lot of money. Not only the pantry staples, not only the rice and beans, but fresh food would be huge right now and it'd be worth a lot of money. And number 10, of course, would be the most important because you got to defend all this. And it would be, uh, I would say, 2A brass. Now, if you understand what I'm saying, I cannot say a lot of things because I've already been pretty held down on this platform. But make sure you are taking care of it by defending it with what you have to utilize such as little projectiles, if you know what I mean. That is something you can purchase anywhere and everywhere and they're going to be banned before long because they're already going up in price they're already causing problems across the states people are trying to get rid of them trying to get rid of the things that let them go if you understand what i'm saying it's important so pick that up because not only do you have it for your sake if you have hunting versions of it and you can barter that again make sure you are trustworthy with who you're bartering that kind of stuff to you could get just about any and everything that you could possibly want because it's worth gold when it comes down to it having self-defense and having ways to uh, bring in harvest is a big deal i would not barter for this at first but that's why i made this the last number this would be something i would stockpile and hoard but if worse come to worse and i gotta treat somebody in my family or i gotta have food or i gotta have survival needs having brass 2a or having little projectiles would be huge these things you could pick up usually for about a hundred dollars or less you could buy all these 10. these are great purchases utilize this list because some things may not benefit you but others may and then you can elaborate on those numbers everybody in the world needs these 10 things not because uh, they're living the same life you are and they may not need them the same way you need them but there's things that you can use on this list for medicine, for health, for healing, for food, for needs for food, for defending food. It's all things that can provide for you. But not only that, it can provide for someone else and it becomes a true bartering currency when there is no money. Buy these things because they're gonna be worth their weight in gold when it comes down to it. I don't wanna not have these things. And when people talk about, well, I don't know what to do. Do I stockpile cash? Do I stop stop my gold to put all my money in bitcoin no i say you could spread it out but really when it comes down to it these things are going to be worth more than any dollar bill or any gold because you can actually utilize them for food and to save your family guys thank you for watching god bless happy homestead y'all